Do you secretly wish that loose ends would magically vanish overnight or become the latest fashion trend? Well, you're not alone. Weaving in ends can be a daunting task that keeps many crocheters at bay. But what if I told you that there's a game-changing method that requires me to weave in just one, yes, just one loose end while making an entire miniature granny square blanket like this one? In this video, I'm going to reveal my secret to handling those ends that has been a hot topic on my Instagram. Let's dive right in and put an end to the end weaving struggle. While I usually crochet my miniatures with sewing thread and a tiny 0.4 millimeter hook, for the sake of clarity, I'll be using crochet cotton and a 2.5 millimeter hook so you can see every detail of what I'm doing. I'm going to walk you through my end weaving technique using a granny square as an example. Here's the chart I'm using to make my granny square. Feel free to take a screenshot for future reference or simply pause the video as you work on your square. When I'm working in the round, I always start with a magic ring. It's not just a fancy name, it's a technique that makes handling your crochet project much easier and keeps the center of your square nice and compact, especially when working with sewing thread. So here's how it goes. Chain three and then make two double crochets right into that magic ring. Next, chain two to form your very first corner. Now you're going to make three more double crochets followed by another chain two. Repeat this step two more times so you end up with four groups of three double crochets each separated by a chain two. Give the tail a gentle tug. Now to finish up the round, simply slip stitch into the third chain of that initial chain three. Here's a little pro tip before making that slip stitch, take the end and wrap it around your hook. It'll help keep that tail snug and secure. Once you've done that, cut the thread and draw it through the loop. To ensure that the center end stays put, attach it with a slip stitch to the back loop of one of the three double crochets. Now it's time to introduce the second color into the mix. Attach the new thread to the corner opposite to where the previous round ended. This clever move gives you more room to work over those pesky ends. Start the round by drawing the thread through the chain two space and then chain three to kick off the second round. In that same space, work two double crochets, making sure you crochet right over the end to lock it in place. Continue the pattern with three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets in each of the next three corners. Now, here's a little tip. As you go along, give those ends a gentle pull from time to time to ensure the tension stays just right. As you proceed, you'll begin working over the two ends from the previous round. You can easily hold the other end with your right hand to keep it from getting in your way. Remember, it's essential to crochet over both ends to keep everything secure. Close the round with a slip stitch, just like you did in the previous round. Give the square a little stretch in different directions to fix the tension. Now let's move on to the next color, just like before, attach the new thread to the corner opposite to where the previous round ended. Make sure that the end of your new thread has a length of at least two sides and of course ensure that the end from the previous round matches in length as well. Start this round the same way as round two and as you work your way around the square be sure to crochet right over the end. In the spaces between the two groups of double crochet from the previous round, work three double crochets. When you reach the corners, make three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. Now, here's where the magic happens. In the next space, you'll start working over both ends of the previous round. After you insert the hook under the bottom end, give it a gentle pull to level it with the top of the double crochet clusters. It's an excellent way to hide those ends and ensure they stay put. In the corners, you can work over only the top end. The bottom end is held securely by the corner double crochets. 
keep working over both ends when you're in the spaces on the sides of the square. When you reach the end of the round, finish it off with a slip stitch. Take a look at the back of the project and you'll notice that the orange ends are securely tucked away, unlike the green one, which still peeks through over the orange stitches. To save you some time, I've gone ahead and skipped the first two sides of the next round. Just remember to crochet over that starting end to ensure it's fully locked in place, work over it in the first four to five spaces. And just like in the previous round, be sure to crochet over both ends when you're working those three double crochets in the space from the previous round. As you can see, the ends are beginning to blend seamlessly with the square. If you're looking to create a larger square, simply add more rounds to your project. Just remember to work over the ends just like you did for the last couple of rounds. If your plan is to join your squares using one of the join as you go methods, then you can skip the next step and continue working over the last end of the square as you do that. However, if you prefer a different approach, such as sewing your squares together, you'll want to start your last round a bit differently. Leave the end long enough to comfortably hide it using a darning needle and do not work over it. As you work the regular granny square pattern, remember to crochet over both ends of the previous round, ensuring that your square remains neatly finished for whichever method of assembly you choose. When it comes to finishing your round, you have a few options. You can go with the traditional slip stitch or you can opt for one of the more seamless methods. In this demonstration, I'm using my crochet hook, but I'll admit that using a darning needle might be a smoother and more convenient choice. The key is to find what works best for you. Regardless of the method you choose, remember to leave the end long enough. This will make it a breeze to weave in with a needle later on. Congratulations, you're now in the home stretch. All of your ends, except for those in the last round, are securely fastened and ready to be trimmed. But before you grab those scissors, let's attend to the remaining ends that need a bit of weaving in. Select a needle that's appropriate for the thickness of your yarn or thread. For my miniature projects, I prefer a size 12 beading needle. As you hide the end within your stitches, be sure to give the edge a gentle stretch now and then to check that the tension is just right. As you work your way along the edge, consider changing the direction in which you weave the end. This little trick will help keep it firmly secured in place. Keep following these steps for the other end and your project will be finished off flawlessly. Once you've completed weaving in those ends, it's time for the final touch. Give your granny square a good stretch in all directions and gently pull on those ends to ensure that the tension is spot on. With this step, you can be confident that all ends are firmly secured and ready to be snipped. A word of caution when working with sewing thread and thinner yarns. Be extra careful to avoid accidentally snipping one of the double crochet stitches. Trust me, I've been there, and it's an experience I wouldn't wish on anyone. When you get to the two center ends, you have two options. You can simply snip them, which works well for more decorative projects like miniature blankets or doll clothes, where they won't undergo heavy use or frequent washing. On the other hand, if you're crocheting everyday full-size projects that will see a lot of wear and tear, it's best to opt for the second option, weaving those ends in for that extra layer of protection. The choice ultimately depends on the purpose and use of your creation. 
And there you have it, a flawlessly finished granny square with all those ends neatly secured. In the micro scale, those ends are so discreet that it's hard to tell which side of your petite blanket is which. And that's a wrap for this tutorial. If you've found these end weaving tips valuable for your micro crochet projects, be sure to give that like button a friendly tap. Don't forget to explore my other micro crochet tips and tricks videos, and don't hesitate to dive into one of the micro crochet tutorials. Happy crocheting, and I'm thrilled to have you along for more micro crochet adventures in the future.